to simplify the problem, I'm gonna deal with 3 by 4 matrix as an example data set. In this project, I'm gonna count how many positive, negative, and zero numbers, then display the result in the text in the command window. So once you've done that, you can save it again and run it. And then you can see the text that you wanted to display. We have six positive numbers, and we have four negative numbers, and we have two zero numbers. So the key thing is that how to utilize a nested for loop with a conditional statement, which is if statement. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Stem, and thanks for coming back to my channel to watch another tutorial video. Today I'm gonna go over big data processing in Octave and MATLAB. Processing big data is a very important skill to understand what kind of data that we have. To understand the type of data in your data set is very important. So for example, if you have a how many positive number in your data set, assuming your data that you are dealing with is all numeric number. So for example, in the daily stock price up and down can be considered as a positive or negative number. And if there's no price change in daily basis, you can consider as a zero. So today I'm gonna go over how to count how many positive numbers, negative numbers, and zero numbers in your data set as a 2D array. To simplify the problem, I'm gonna deal with three by four matrix as an example data set. In this project, I'm gonna count how many positive, negative, and zero numbers, then display the result in the text in the command window. In the given data set, I have six positive numbers and four negative numbers, and we have two zeros. At the end of Octave MATLAB script, I'm gonna display we have six positive numbers, we have four negative numbers, and we have two zero numbers in the command window. So let's find out how to come up with the M file to finish this project. The first step that I need to go over is to generate the data set as a matrix. I'm gonna use the variable name X, followed by creating matrix for the given data. Once you've done that, I'm gonna start using the double for loop. First for loop to read the data in the column direction. The other one is for the row direction. I need to work with the index for the row direction and column direction. For the row direction, I'm gonna use i as an index, j for the column. I'm gonna save this script as a count numbers. Then once you run, then display the contents of X, we successfully create a two-dimensional array as a matrix. Now, next step, I need a size of matrix, which is three by four. To come up with a size of matrix, you can use a built-in function called size. So the way that it works is to use row size followed by column size with a square bracket. Then you can use a size for the matrix that you want to work with. In this case, my matrix name is X. So once you run it again, your row size is three and column size is four. Now next step, I'm gonna use a nested for loop to access all my data in matrix. Now I need an index for the row and column. I'm gonna use I as a row index and J for the column index. Now I'm gonna sweep from the first row to row number three, and then first column to column number four. The way that it works in the nested for loop, you can start with four, and then row index i, one through size of row, followed by the second for loop for column, index j, one through size of column. Then you can close your nested for loop by using end. Now, in order to access the each element in the matrix X, you can use variable name X followed by row index, comma, column index J. Now, the question is how many positive number you have? So in order to count it, you might to use if statement. If statement require a condition you can work with, whether the individual element of X is a positive number or individual element x and y 
j is a negative number. Otherwise means this is zero. So if there's positive number, you may want to count how many positive numbers you have. So in order to count it, I'm going to introduce another variable name called number of positive. So initially, I don't want to count any of them so that I can assign it zero. And then second variable that I wanted to work with is for negative numbers to have. So initially is zero. And lastly, I'm going to work with how many zero number you have. Again, uh, I can start with zero. So if the element is greater than zero, you can increase number of positive number by increasing by one. So in order to make it happen in program language, you can use n positive equal n positive plus one. If this is below zero, meaning that you need to increase number count for n negative so that you can have n negative equals n negative plus one. If not even falling into either positive or negative, it means this should be considered as a zero. So that you can use n underscore zero equals n zero plus one. Once you've done that, you can run it, see how many n positive you have, which is six, how many n negative, We have four and we have two zeros. Now the question is how we can wrap up with the text. We have six positive numbers, four negative numbers, and zero negative numbers. So in order to make it happen, we can use appprintf function. So you can start using appprintf followed by we have some specifier which can be replaced by variable and positive. And followed by backslash n which is enter. So I can add a variable name for specifier and underscore positive. Similarly, you can also copy and paste it and then replace the text as negative numbers and then variable name that you need to work with is negative so lastly you can also make a n zero numbers so that i need to work with n zero so once you've done that you can save it again and run it and then you can see the text that you wanted to display. We have six positive numbers, and we have four negative numbers, and we have two zero numbers. So the key thing is that how to utilize a nested for loop with a conditional statement, which is if statement. So hope this tutorial video is useful for you to understand how to count the type of data in the 2D array. Thanks for watching this video, and please subscribe my channel if you want to continue to watch tutorial videos in science, technology, engineering, and math. Please give some up if you enjoyed. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below and see you next time.